Hello, my name is Chella Saya, and I am a study abroad advisor at UW Stout's Office of International Education. And today we're very happy to have with us a representative from the Munich University of Applied Sciences to tell you about your option to study abroad there. So Christian Drola, thank you for being here and I will turn it over to you. Oh, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here and, and uh, to be able to tell something about our university. So um, you may get interested in joining us for a semester abroad. And uh, yeah, I want to give you a short introduction to the university, about uh, the university itself, about what we offer uh, as a university to our exchange students. And of course, if there's any question later on, I'm happy to answer those as well. So Munich University of Applied Sciences is, of course, in Munich, as the name suggests. Uh, we're a rather big university of applied sciences. There are other university types. I'll get to that in a minute. But for University of Applied Sciences, we're actually the second biggest university of applied sciences in, in Germany, just after Cologne. We have a little over 18,000 students, more than 400 professors and a lot of part time lecturers from the industry. Um, more than 80 degree programs are being taught in our 14 different departments, so a lot of departments with a lot of different courses. We do not have liberal arts um, or something of that kind, but mostly it's uh, technology, engineering, business, design and social sciences. This is just a short overview of what we offer. We do have, as I mentioned, bachelor and master programs. We are not allowed as a University of Applied Sciences to award PhDs ourselves, but we can do it in cooperation with so-called research universities, so universities who are allowed to do that. And we actually do have more uh, than 100 PhD students at our university receiving a cooperative PhD from another university. Our main study focus is practice and application. That's in the name applied sciences so in contrast to the other research universities um, who have a more theoretical approach our approach is very application oriented uh, we have a lot of uh, contacts to the industry and actually work at different projects for different industries due to the uh, format of our classes they are usually very small of course they are bigger classes and lectures like um, uh, especially at the beginning uh, in the first year, first year for first year students um, classes are a bit bigger depending on the study program but then uh, for the regular seminars uh, they are quite small too. Another um, specific part of our uh, study focus at as a University of Applied Sciences is that we have a compulsory internship semester. So all of our students who study with us for a degree have to do a mandatory internship during their studies for a full semester. And of course, um, we do have a lot of partners there where students can do that. They have to choose and, and select the internship themselves, but we of course have different options for them. And also very important and also maybe important for you if you decide to come to us. Um, all of our professors have to have a minimum of five years experience in the industry or in, a, in the professional area. So no one can become a professor at our university without having those five years of experience, which of course makes sense seeing that our approach is applied and application oriented. So um, bringing these um, experiences back from the industry to the classroom is one of our main focus. For those of you who don't know, Munich is right in the middle of Europe, as you can see here on this map, um, in the south of Germany, and is a huge industry hub, not just in Germany, but over Europe and basically the world um, in general. Of course, there's the automotive industry. You may have heard from uh, about BMW. They have their main headquarters in Munich. Um, but of course, there's also other industries, as you can see in this slide. So um, different business areas, finance, design, IT, of course, and communications, a very big part. And uh, last not least, tourism. Uh, We're very tourism specific location um, with our um, with us 
being in the south of Germany and close to the borders of different countries. So um, that is a big part um, as well. The university has mainly three campuses. Um, when I speak of campus, I do not mean a campus probably in the way that you would um, understand it. So it's not a closed area. We are just in the middle of the city next to apartment buildings, grocery stores, etc. This is just different buildings and of course specific areas where those buildings are located. Our main campus is Campus Lodstrasse. That's uh, close to the city center and hosts the most of our departments and also all of the administration, including, for example, the president's office and us, the international office as well. Even further to the city center is our campus Karlstrasse, which hosts um, the departments of architecture, civil engineering and geoinformatics. So that's very close to the old town. A little further out then um, in the western part of Munich is our campus Pasing, uh, which hosts the departments of business administration and social sciences. So uh, depending on what you're studying, um, you probably will not interchange between these campuses, but there might be um, a possibility there. Just bear in mind that they are a little apart from each other. So um, not taking classes and 20 minutes later taking another class at another campus might be uh, suggested. So here's the structure of our study programs. I won't go into details about the bachelor and master programs because that's not uh, the main focus of today. Um, but uh, if you decide to come to us for a full semester studying abroad, um, besides doing the regular studies, we also have the option of certificates for free, so there's no um, fee for that. Um, just you have to take some specific classes and we do have certificates in, in engineering, in international business or in general courses in English, which may not make sense for you. It's more uh, important for students coming from a non English speaking country. Um, but if you're interested in, in certificates in international engineering or international business, just take some specific classes laid out on our website and you can receive one of those certificates uh, in addition to your regular transcript. If you're on the other side interested maybe in coming only for a short period of time, so you don't want to spend a semester abroad, but a couple of weeks, we also uh, offer so-called summer school summer programs during uh, July, August. And our two main ones are um, engineering for sustainability and also another one on supply chain management. So if you're interested in those short term programs, those are actually fee paying programs, um, but you can earn credits with those as well. And of course, you can find more information on our website too. Just in general, to give you an idea uh, how we as a university want the profile of our students to sh be shaped. Uh, we have three main focuses here. Um, one of them is international experience and intercultural skills. So we would like our students to go abroad and are happy to welcome students from abroad at our university to just have a wide variety of cultures and experience from all over the world. In addition to that, there's two other focuses. One of them is uh, education for sustainable development, meaning that all of our programs or um, classes in general um, are also focused on looking at the sustainable part of everything. Sustainable not necessarily only in the sense of um, waste or anything like that, but also how to do uh, or um, engineer something uh, that is sustainable for future purposes. And the third one is uh, actually I'd say uh, the main focus uh, of our university um, it's called entrepreneurial thinking and action. So related to the business and uh, entrepreneur side of um, education. So we do have a so-called Strashek Center. Strashek is a person who donated uh, some, some money. We usually don't work with donations, but um, that's a very specific case. And uh, within this center, it's an entrepreneurial center. Students can uh, work on so-called real projects, meaning something that is actually out there in the real world and work on that in different groups from different areas. So students studying design can work together with students from business and students in engineering. 
and uh, even work on their own startups. So we do have a, a fairly large startup culture at the university. Um, and this is also supported by the university and this uh, affiliate institute. So if you're interested in doing some of those things, you're very welcome to join um, our students in there too. If you're interested in different uh, things, of course, next to your studies, you can also uh, do different student activities. Um, just some of them are mentioned here. We do have a formula student team, meaning it's a race car team, uh, which um, does races all over the world uh, with different other universities. Um, there's a fuel one, but there's also an electric one. So if you're interested in, in joining those and they don't just work on engineering, they also work on the business side or the design side. So uh, different areas can work on that as well. If you're interested in music, uh, we do have a choir and orchestra and a big band. They don't meet, unfortunately, uh, during these difficult times right now, in person at least. They did meet and there's also a nice video um, on YouTube, maybe you can find it, uh, of our um, choir uh, who put together a Zoom um, choir and then uh, well, worked on that together. Um, there's different more uh, opportunities. I just want to quickly mention sports. It's not sports compared uh, to what may you may be used to. We by far do not have the opportunities to offer any kind of sports as uh, you know from the US, uh, but still there's a central university sports center um, covering all kinds of sports um, for all uh, universities in Munich. So you can go uh, swimming, you can do any ball sports, you can go golfing, you can go sailing, you can go climbing in the mountains. That's all covered um, in the central university sports and um, per semester, I think it's only 10 euros which is roughly, I don't know, eight US dollars uh, to join the sports clubs. So um, fairly easy to have some activities there. Um, yeah, and there's also, we do have a cinema, well, we not, uh, not an actual cinema, but a cinema club uh, meeting in the big lecture hall, if that is possible and watching movies together. Also English, uh, um, uh, movies in the, in the English language. So um, maybe there's something there as well. We also do have an international club, and I'll get to that in a minute um, when I show you the services we offer to our exchange students. But first, just some general information about the international activities uh, that we have at the university. We have more than 200 partner universities worldwide, uh, one of them being uh, UW Stout. We've been partners for almost a decade now. Um, a fairly big number of international students could be higher, but um, that's the way it is. Um, we do have also uh, every semester different guest lecturers from all over the world. So we do not just welcome students from abroad, but also uh, professors and lecturers from abroad. So you may be able to take classes from uh, lecturers from all over the world at our university. Um, we have some dual degree programs, summer schools, as I mentioned, and very important for you, uh, more than 120 subject courses in English each semester. Bear in mind, we're still a German university, so our main language of study is German, and most of the regular study programs are being taught in German. But we want international students coming to our university, and especially for exchange students coming for a semester or so. Uh, we do offer those subject courses in English. Um, these are regular classes um, at different departments, all over all departments, and as an exchange student, you can choose almost freely between all of them. So you're not restricted to uh, choosing classes from your own study program, but you can take also classes from other programs if you meet the prerequisites. And of course, if you're interested in learning a foreign language, for example, German, but also maybe some other language, uh, you can do so also through our language um, department. This is, of course, also free of charge because it's a regular study program um, where you can just study, I don't know, Japanese, Portuguese, Spanish, or German. This is just to show you where our partners are. May not be of that much interest to you, maybe only in the sense that you can just see where we welcome students from each semester. So, of course, a lot of partner universities in Europe, 
all over the place, but also around the world. Um, there's one of those uh, red dots in the US is UW Stout, but uh, as you can see, we have partner universities um, all over the place. So uh, we're happy to be able to welcome students from almost every continent um, each semester. And now finally, for you, the most important part, probably the services for our incoming students, uh, st meaning students coming to us for a semester abroad. Um, we do have a welcome service, a so-called buddy program, meaning that one of our students is taking care of a specific number of um, international students, just maybe picking them up from the airport or from the central station, showing them around what the university is about, where to buy stuff, uh, how to open a bank account, helping with the administrative part of registering with the city and so on. So um, don't worry, you are not alone. You always have next to us from the official side, uh, also a student who can assist you if you want to. You don't have to do that, but this is just an offer. We offer assistance with housing, meaning we do not have our own housing. We do not own any residence halls. No, no university in Germany does. That's a different system. Um, but um, we do get a specific number of rooms from an entity called Studentenwerk, which is in charge of residence halls uh, for a whole city. So in that case, uh, in Munich, and uh, we can then provide those rooms to our exchange students. It's unfortunately not always enough for all exchange students, but uh, never fear if you don't get a room in a residence hall. Um, we, of course, will also assist you in finding rooms elsewhere. We also offer a cultural program just uh, before the start of the semester because usually our students arrive a little early and just to get acquainted uh, with the city and uh, everything. So before the semester starts, we, the international office, uh, usually offer a cultural program where we go to the main parts of what you may be interested or what stereotypically speaks for Munich. Um, so we can go to, for example, the BMW plant where they show you how they manufacture their cars. Uh, we usually go to Allianz Arena, that's the bigger soccer stadium here in Munich. And we uh, also oftentimes go to a brewery uh, because Munich, of course, is famous for its beer. And we have a lot of breweries here and uh, we usually go to one of them with you where they show you how they actually brew beer. And there's also a beer tasting um, if you're interested. So that's something that uh, comes in handy. Uh, when you're here over here in Germany. The German language courses I already mentioned, so if you're interested in learning German, you can do so uh, at different levels. We offer that as well. I put the scholarships and financial support section here in brackets because that depends on what kind of funding we get. That's not always the case, but if you're interested, just reach out to us and we will see and look into that what is currently available. And as I mentioned earlier, there is an international club. That's um, a club by students from our university interested in the international area. Um, some of them went abroad themselves. Some of them are from abroad. So they have something innate um, that uh, drives them. They do this for free. There's nothing uh, to it, but they are just interested in helping international students out and offering a program throughout the semester where they have bi-weekly get-togethers. Usually uh, they meet in a bar or a pub uh, in the evening every two weeks. This is currently also, of course, not really possible, so they meet online. Um, but they also plan trips um, for our uh, international students because there's a lot to see when you come to Munich, not just go to the university, but uh, experience the whole area. Um, so sometimes they go to Berlin for a couple of days with you or go to the Alps skiing or and go to the, the Deutsches Museum, the German Museum. It's uh, the biggest um, museum for, for technology, I think, in Europe. Um, so they have different things planned, just going to cities nearby, going to the lakes nearby, um, everything that you can imagine. And um, yeah, you can join them just by going with them and have a nice time and meet uh, different people from different parts of the world and just get together. So if you're interested um, in joining us, I leave out the lower part here because that's for degree seeking students. Of course, if you're interested in coming for a degree to us, you can do that as well. 
but today's uh, topic is, is studying abroad. So if you want to come to us, you can see our application deadlines here on the top. For the winter semester, it's the middle of May, and for the summer semester, the middle of November. Um, of course, these are our deadlines. You have to apply to your university first, uh, go through their selection process, and if you are selected by them, they will then nominate you to us, and then these deadlines apply. Uh, you can also see here our uh, lecture and exam periods. Uh, we do have also have basically two semesters. One is the winter semester, starts October 1st and runs until the middle of February. And then there's this so-called summer semester, which starts in the middle of March and then runs until the end of July. So basically, from experience for most uh, students from the US, it makes sense to only come in the summer semester because that's basically covering your spring term. Uh, if you come for the winter semester, it overlaps because it's for you, it's still one part fall, one part spring. So that may be a little difficult unless you decide to come for a full year, then of course you can uh, come for both semesters and we're very, very open to that as well. All right, that's basically it from my side. If you have any questions, um, you can always reach out to me. You can see my contact details here. Um, and yeah, now I'm happy to answer any questions they have. Thank you so much, Christian. I do have a few questions that we've had uh, from students and from uh, some of the faculty at UW Stout. So one of the things I wanted to talk with you a bit more about is coursework. Um, so just to provide a bit of background from our side, um, when students are applying and preparing to go um, to exchange with Munich University of Applied Sciences. Part of the process is to complete a form uh, called the Proposal for Transferred Credits form where they will work with their program director to identify courses that they wish to take at Munich um, and exactly how they will transfer back uh, when they return on their transcript here at Stout. Um, so one of the things that we recommend to students is to make sure that you don't just identify the, the smallest number of courses, you actually identify a number of extra courses just in case once they get there, they're not able to take the courses that that they you know, were originally planning for. Um, if that happens, a student gets there and they find that perhaps a course didn't get the minimum number of students and it has to be canceled, what are their options there and what support do they have? Yeah, so that's uh, of course a very common issue that we also face with our students going abroad. We also have a form like this. Um, as you mentioned correctly, it makes sense to choose at the beginning more classes than you will actually take once you are here at the university because for whatever reason, um, classes can be canceled. Um, bear also in mind that uh, the, the courses we offer in English are for the most part currently um, extra classes being offered by um, our staff, our professors, but they are mostly not part of the regular study program. So they offered in addition and then depending on um, the availability of, of uh, lecturers, sometimes it's guest lecturers, um, there may be changes to that. So it's not part of the core curriculum. So there may be changes to the classes in English we offer. So it makes sense to start by uh, choosing more classes at the beginning than you actually want to take just to have some backup. Um, and once the selection process is done um, here and you realize, well, I do need more classes or I do need another class because the other one got canceled for whatever reason, um, you can and should of course do so. So um, there's always um, two people at the university that uh, students um, get contact details of. Of course, they have more, but um, main people. One of them is in the, in the international office, taking care of all the administrative side. In that case, that would be me um, for, for US students, um, just working with all the paperwork and so on. And there's also uh, one person assigned in each department to international students, a so-called departmental coordinator. Um, helping out with everything regarding the academic side, including classes. So if you are uncertain uh, which classes uh, you may need to take in addition to the classes you originally chose, um, this contact person is the right one to go to um, and talk to about 
what may be the best fit because you may not know the exact content of a class, but only know the one that you want to uh, transfer back. So um, talking to those uh, departmental coordinators is um, the most important part in that area. But of course, this is still some time. So it's not, there is a deadline for, for course registration, of course, um, but usually um, only few courses have a limitation or a, a low limitation for, for participants. So joining another class is not impossible, even if the selection process has already passed. Um, it's simply just asking the lecturer if you can still join the class and then hopefully this works out for the best for, for the students who couldn't get their um, intended classes originally. Great, thanks for that explanation. Um, staying on the same topic of, of the courses, um, you mentioned that um, the, the these courses that are being offered in English are extra to the, the normal curriculum that you offer. So for our UW Stout students, who else is in these classes with them? Is it other international students, also German students? And can you talk a little bit about the style of instruction um, that may be a bit different from what they're used to here in the United States? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so who they are with in their classes depends a little on the actual class. Um, as mentioned, um, some of those, most of those classes are currently um, an extra offer, an extra core curriculum, and those classes are for the most part, of course, taken by our international students. So uh, these will be classes mainly taken uh, by international students and barely by German students, because if the English class is basically the same class than a regular German class and our students um, can choose if they want to take the English or the German class. From experience, most of them will probably go with the German class. But uh, there, we see some change there. So, um, for example, in uh, our department for tourism management, but also in the business department or also the engineering and management department, they change their courses accordingly that uh, those most of them became part of the regular study program so in those classes, you will probably see a mixture of uh, German and international students. So um, depending on the class, this can differ, but um, we try to get our students more to go into these English taught classes because it's also important for them to just see and learn and, and take a class in English with the specific terms that they certainly uh, will need to use in the later life uh, when they get to work because everything is international today. But um, yeah, so some are only um, taken by international students. Some is a mixture with German students. When it comes to the uh, different um, teaching approach or different style in teaching, it is very different. That's actually one of the questions I ask as well our students when they apply for going abroad because um, some of them know, some of them don't. That, for example, in the US, but also some other countries, um, the style of teaching or, or giving a class um, is is uh, rather different. So um, it's more probably interactive. And um, you, for example, also have midterms or quizzes or presentations or anything like that. And for each one, you get a different grade, and then you get an overall grade um, at the end. That is very different to our approach uh, here. Most uh, courses uh, only have one final exam, um, which makes it sometimes a bit difficult because you can have a bad day and then um, not get a good grade. Um, but the idea behind this is that uh, we want our students to be already be more independent. So when they come from school, um, and go to university, the university already tries to prepare them for their later work life. Um, and later in their work, um, nobody will take their hand and, and tell them, well, now you do this, now you do this, and um, you just, just, just listen. So uh, the idea behind this approach is that um, students independently have to find out, OK, now I need to work on that. Today I'm going to learn for that class. Tomorrow I'm going to learn for that class. On the weekend, I'll 
take some time for myself and then again I learn for another class or prepare something read up or anything so uh, it's very different throughout the semester for most classes there's no mandatory attendance no homework no um, presentations no projects or anything like that you do everything in class but then you have to find out and and uh, learn on your own um, in your free time uh, so the, the downside is that it, you only can rely on one final exam and, and have to find a way how to learn. Um, it's difficult for our students as well uh, when they come from school because they are not used to that and then only start learning two weeks prior to the exam. So um, and then forget everything, which is not the intention, but that happens. Um, the upside um, then is that you have more freedom in how you um, so you, what you do with your time. So you can decide on your own. OK, today. I'm not learning. I'm I don't know. Go meet up with some friends or go on a trip if time allows it. But then I will have to learn again and, and make up for that time. So um, this is very different and students should be prepared uh, for this kind of situation. Thanks. That is good for our students to think about ahead of time. Um, the prospect of not having homework sounds great at first, but it, it is sort of a, a different mindset, um, but not one that's inconsistent with, with our approach. At UW-Stout, we certainly emphasize career readiness uh, for our students, and this absolutely, this approach is a way to, to start preparing yourself for the different type of work environment you'll have in a job. Um, but going back to your point about having the freedom um, to be able to use your time, um, perhaps to get out and, and explore and have that cultural experience that is also so important as part of the exchange experience. Um, what do you hear from your international students as far as some of their favorite excursions while they're there? I think one thing that students from the United States are not used to is, is just how close things are and also how connected they are with public transportation that you can get to other major cities in Europe within just a few hours by a fast train. What are the favorite places? Yeah, thanks. That that is very correct. What you what you mentioned. We hear that a lot from our international students because, of course, we know what they do during their studies here. Not all the time, but um, sometimes they just tell them that it's a, a great way to just not just get to know Munich. Of course, you can do that. It's big enough. You can spend a lot of time there. But um, as you may have seen at the beginning uh, with its location, it gives a great opportunity uh, to go about and see everything else in Europe. Europe, as you mentioned, is. is not small, but uh, Europe as a whole is only slightly bigger than uh, US as a, as a sole country. So um, Munich is in the south of Germany, close to the borders of uh, Switzerland and Austria and also Italy and the Czech Republic. So those are the main places um, students can go to uh, maybe for just a day or two. So uh, it doesn't need to be a, a big vacation. It just can be a weekend trip to go to the Alps skiing or go to Italy and uh, to, to Venice and, and uh, go what they have to offer. Go to Prague, see the old historic buildings. Um, of course, close to Munich, uh, just a little further south um, uh, near the Alps is uh, Castle Neuschwanstein. That's the so-called Disney castle, um, which Disney just copied because our castle was first. Um, but there's a lot of castles also in Germany and around Europe in, in general. So um, hundreds uh, of years old um, and also great lakes uh, you can uh, you can you can go to. Um, within Germany, Berlin is a, is a popular location, of course, uh, due to its history. Um, so yeah, those I think are the, the main part. Of course, just a, a short um, flight away is also Spain um, or Greece or um, the UK, for example. Of course, Northern Europe, not to uh, underestimate Northern Europe with Scandinavia, which is also a, quite a nice region. And it's only about a two hour plane ride uh, to get there. So everything is possible just for a weekend trip, for example, as I mentioned. And, and that's um, a good way 
to to get to know not just Munich but uh, Germany and Europe as a whole. And also uh, to your point uh, about public transportation, um, of course, depending on where exactly you go, there is a very good public transportation in place. Just to talk about Munich uh, for a second, uh, we do a very good public transportation system. Um, it wouldn't make sense for us uh, to use a car within the especially inner city because there's just too tight, too much traffic. Um, so all most of us have actually use public transportation, also bicycles uh, for that matter. But public transportation is very um, common. It's uh, not too expensive and it can take you easily from one place to another. Um, there's cheap tickets for students, of course, um, to, to get around. Um, Berlin, uh, for example, is uh, about a three to four hour train ride away, as is Milan in Italy. So uh, you can both ways. Uh, you can go both ways uh, with the same period of time and just go to very different places. So this is certainly um, a great option for students, not just to get to know um, the, the university side, but also everything else. It's so exciting. And I would add, um, I also love the holiday markets in Germany. Uh, students were there to study for the entire academic year. That's, I think it's really interesting to be able to uh, get to know a country through the holidays and how they celebrate them similarly and differently. Um, going back to, to traveling a bit. Um, so we talked about how the courses are offered in English that our students would be taking. And so students coming from Stout may or may not have uh, you know, a proficient level of German. As they are traveling about the country, can they still get around pretty easily with just basic German or perhaps none at first? Well, they certainly can. Of course, it always helps um, anywhere you go in the world to speak the language of the country, makes it easier. But um, especially in bigger cities like Munich, for example, but basically all over Germany and for that matter, the most parts of Europe, you can get by with no uh, language skills besides English. Um, so if you if you go to a store, if you go to a restaurant, if you meet people on the street and talk to them in English, I'd say four out of five would have no issue talking to you in English and and. Uh, um, at least understanding you and trying to help you out. Um, English is uh, for the majority of um, people here in Germany, but I think also in a couple of other countries, the first for a language we learn from a from um, young age. So um, everybody is OK in speaking English. Uh, we actually um, sometimes get complaints by students who want to learn German that uh, when they talk to someone on the street, for example, asking for um, where, to, where to get to somewhere um, and the person realizes uh, that you are not from this country or not speaking uh, German, they will reply in English automatically, even though you might like to uh, get a re reply in German, but this is just uh, the way of behavior. So sometimes you have to um, force others as well to talk to you in German if you prefer that. But yeah, that's certainly, um, no difficult task to get around uh, in Germany or in Europe in general. In rural areas, it may be a bit more difficult because they are not used to that many um, international visitors. Um, also stereotypically, sometimes uh, in Southern Europe, they are more proud of their language and try to uh, speak the language that uh, they are, may not be that open to. Um, talking English to you, but still um, nobody is, is rude or anyway if, if you speak English to them and especially um, in countries like the Netherlands or Scandinavia, um, English is basically um, the second language uh, of the state. It, it's not officially, um, but uh, you can very easily get by uh, with just speaking English. Yes, I agree. That is absolutely the case. Um, Talking a little bit more about getting around in Munich itself, um, you touched upon the fact that uh, housing for students at the university level is very different there than, than here in the United States. Um, 
for students coming from Stout, what can they expect as far as the housing, um, the style of housing, and if they are coming, you know, perhaps with several other Stout students, would they expect to be, you know, in the next room from them or perhaps in, in different locations? Yeah, so um, Munich has a very tough housing market in general, not for international students, just in, in general, because a lot of people want to come to Munich, work in Munich because of its uh, uh, high standard uh, and also the industry. Um, and there's just not generally enough housing, but still, um, as I mentioned before, Studentenwerk is um, the, the, the um, entity, for lack of, of a better word, um, to oversee all the um, housing for students uh, in Munich for all universities. So there's no specific uh, housing service for, for just one university. Um, they own all the residence halls um, and provide a specific number of rooms to each university, depending on some formula they, they have. Um, so what they do is they tell us the number of rooms they have that we get and we can then um, tell them uh, these are the students that we want uh, uh, that we have here that want rooms. Sometimes this uh, number differs, um, especially in our winter semester. We have more students coming in than we get um, rooms in residence halls. So. Um, there might be an issue there. There's about a 60 to 70 percent chance to get a room in one of those residence halls for the summer uh, semester. It's it's uh, much better. So 90 to 100 percent room coverage is is, is possible there. Um, should I make rooms in residence halls are rooms in residence halls. So with other students, there's uh, it's always single rooms. It may be in, in shared apartments, but it's always single rooms. There's no uh, double rooms uh, available. Um, and depending on the residence halls um, at a relatively cheap price, starting from, I don't know, 300 euros up to about 500 euros per month. Um, you can do the math with the exchange rate, um, but uh, so rather cheap, but they are all over the place because uh, we do not have our own residence halls. So um, those residence halls are all over the city. Uh, in different parts of the city. Um, there's no residence hall on campus, doesn't exist. Um, it's just depending on what, what is available. Um, so students, when coming to you, even if they are in a bigger number, may not be in the same residence hall. It just depends on what rooms in which residence hall we get. So not all of our students are in the same residence hall um, and not on the same floor, etc. So there may be um, differences there that uh, even if, for example, three of uh, your students come to us, um, they may not necessarily be in the same residence hall. Um, so students should be prepared to meet other students. There will always be other international students at each residence hall because that's just the way it works. It's it's a mixture, but um, yeah, it may not be uh, that all students from the same university get into the same residence hall. If a student does not get a room in a residence hall, which can happen, so we cannot give out any guarantee on that. Um, they of course will uh, get other assistance uh, from us. We do have an extensive brochure on how to find accommodation in Munich with all the websites and what to expect and what to look out for and what you need and how to um, best uh, write someone uh, that you're interested in a room. So because there's so many people looking for a room, you just cannot write an email. I'm interested in the room and then send the email away. Nobody will read that. So the people want to learn more about you and who they may be renting their apartment to. So stuff like this is covered in, in um, that kind of information package that students will receive. So um, in any way, even though those residence halls might be um, apart from each other, um, as I mentioned before, public transportation is very good and you easily can get uh, from one place to another um, use, just using public transportation, which usually is close to where you live and then get to the university. When you talk about public transportation, is that buses or metros or subways? Everything. All of those. <laughs> All of that. We have buses, we have trams, so street uh, cars, 
um, uh, suburban trains, subway trains, um, everything possible um, in public transportation we do have in Munich. Um, so it's very easy also um, depending on the which which road, uh, which route 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 mm -hmm. you take. Um, every five to ten minutes something is coming up, so you don't have to wait for an hour except in the middle of the night um, to, to for for a bus or a train to arrive. And students um, can get a semester ticket, so um, they can use public transportation at a certain specific time uh, with their student cards, so uh, no extra charge. And if they want to use public transportation 24 seven, so all day, every day, um, they can buy a subsidized, so cheaper for all students. And we definitely recommend it. If you come for our summer semester, you can also use the bike um, very easily to get around. Um, Munich is often called uh, the bike capital of Germany because there's so much uh, biking uh, uh, around um, and bike lanes as well. So it's it, it's possible, um, but public transportation is always a good a good choice. Also because it covers not just the the, the the Munich city area, but also the surrounding areas. So uh, you can even go to day trips to different areas with uh, the regular ticket you already have. Wonderful. And uh, having lived in another bike capital in Amsterdam, I will to put in a little promo. I think it's such a wonderful way to see a city um, just to get out and about and actually pretty much faster than if you were in a car. Well, I think that's all the questions that we had. I want to thank you, Christian, for being here and sharing so much helpful information. Uh, you can see his contact information there if you have any additional questions. But of course, please reach out to our office, the Office of International Education, and specifically the Study Abroad team, which you can email us at studyabroad at uwstout.edu. You can learn more about this exchange program and others by going to our website, which is uwstout.studioabroad.com. And we'd be happy to also meet with you um, by virtual appointment or by phone to answer your questions. So thank you so much. Thank you.